There's more than 104,000 people working on any given day, which would have made the Rouge the third largest city in Michigan. The constantly expanding facility on the Rouge River was working towards a goal of raw materials to automobile in two days. But at the Rouge, Ford had to run more than a factory. He had to run a city. He's building hospitals, he's building fire departments, he's built a power plant. Ford opens his own commissary. A giant lunch complexes. The Rouge at that time was out in the country. And before the streetcar lines were expanded to the Rouge, Ford took a truck chassis Model T and put trailers behind it to transport the workers that they needed to work at the Rouge. But all those people and all those machines making all those auto parts were bound to create waste. Or maybe not. Henry Ford hated waste. He hated wasted time and he hated wasted materials. Henry Ford hated waste. Well, first of all, his cousin by marriage, Edward G. Kingsford, says, uh, Henry, we've got all this wood dust left over and if we press it together, it burns like crazy. He actually took the sawdust from these lumber mills that were making the parts for the Model T and he converted that sawdust into charcoal. That company later actually became Kingsford Charcoal and is still around today. The Rouge plant was out in the country, so Ford also dabbled in his first love, farming. He actually built uh, and gave the workers farmland so that they could build vegetable plots and take food back home with them. One crop they grew at the Rouge, soybeans. He built a soybean processing plant at the Rouge, and at one point, every automobile coming out of the plant was actually painted with paint that contained soybean oil. And then the fiber parts of it were re reused as part of the trunk lining. We're gonna take all of the cartons and we're gonna turn them into paper and into more cartons that we can reuse. We're gonna take the gas that is produced from what's called coking, and we're gonna sell it at the pump so that people can drive my cars with it using my gas. But Ford's customers weren't buying innovation. They were buying cars, and consumer demand was changing. The whole market was booming, expanding, and people wanted more choice. The Model T was obsolete by then. Two-speed planetary transmission, only available in black. Ford's former suppliers, the Dodge Brothers, were beating him at his own game. The competitors are overtaking Ford Motor Company and Henry Ford doesn't like that one bit. We have to change the way that we're doing business. Chevy and others, we're catching up with them. By the late 20s, it looked like the Ford Motor Company might even go out of business. We're in trouble. 